This is page two of our graphing rational functions investigation. So as I mentioned at the start of the previous video, I strongly recommend that you try this page first on your own. So pause the video, try the questions, and then unpause and watch to check your answers with mine. You will learn more if you try it yourself first. So our question here says, consider the following pairs of graphs and answer the questions below. So A and B would be one pair, and then C and D are the other pair. So I have A of X, which is one over X plus two, and B of X, which is one over X plus two squared. So I just notice right now, they pretty much look the same, except this one has a square. This one here, I have X to the three over X plus two X minus two, and then this one is x to the power of three times x plus two squared, x minus two squared. So the difference between these two is that there are squares on the denominator. So let's look at what it's asking. It says when looking at a graph of a rational function, how can you tell if there's a square on one or more of the brackets in the denominator? So I guess what I'm really trying to figure out is what's the difference between not having a square and having the square? Well, if I look at this one, and then I look at this one, the denominator is where the asymptote is. So the asymptote in this one was at negative two, which makes sense because negative two plus two is zero. And then this one here is also at negative two. But what's different is what the ends are doing. So when I look at this one, one of the ends is going down, one of the ends is going up, but on this one, both of the ends are pointing up. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So I have x plus two, so there should be an asymptote at negative two, and x minus two, so there should be an asymptote at positive two, which it has. And then if I try that on this one, still x plus two, so there should be an asymptote at negative two, and x minus two, so there should be an asymptote at positive two. So it still has the same asymptotes, but once again I notice if I look at the asymptote at negative two, one end is pointing down and one end is pointing up on the original function, but here, both ends are pointing, this time they're pointing down. Last time they were both pointing up, this time they're both pointing down. If I look at this one, one of them was going down, one of them was going up, and now both ends are going up. So I don't know that I could predict what direction they're going to go in, but I did notice that when there was a square, both ends of the graph on either side of the asymptote are going in the same direction. So how could I tell if there's a square on one of the brackets? The two ends that are approaching the asymptote will be going in the same direction. So the two ends approaching the asymptote are going in the same direction. And if you think about x-intercepts, if an x-intercept has a square on it, it ends up making a little critical point or a vertex, right? So that it heads back in the same direction that it came from. So here, kind of the same idea, when it has a square, they're both going to go in the same direction. All right, there is one more little part down here. It says, consider the following graphs and answer the questions below. So my first one has eight over x squared plus four, negative three x over x squared plus one, and then two x times x plus four times x minus four, all divided by x squared plus six. So all three of these are rational functions. They all have denominators, but they don't have vertical asymptotes. So if I look at this one, it doesn't have a break in the graph where one end is going up and one end is going down. Same thing here, there isn't a break in that graph either. And same thing here. 
there's no break in our graph. So the question that's being asked is, why don't those rational functions have vertical asymptotes? I mean, we said it was the denominator. They have denominators. So why am I not getting a vertical asymptote? So we said vertical asymptotes happen at the values where the denominator equals zero. So I'm going to try taking that denominator and setting it equal to zero. And then I want to see what happens. So if I subtract 4, I get 0 take away 4 is negative 4. And then when I square root, I'm going to get the plus and minus square root of negative 4. Now, oops, if I try to do the square root of negative 4 on my calculator, I get an error. So you cannot take the square root of a negative number, right? Square roots are trying to figure out what number did I square to get a certain number. So when did I multiply by itself to get negative 4? Unfortunately, if I multiply two positives together, I will get a positive. And if I multiply two negatives together, I will also get a positive. So the only way that you can get a negative answer is if you multiply two different numbers together, one that's positive and one that's negative. So you cannot take the square root of a negative number. And if I tried the other ones, x squared plus 1, if I move the 1 to the other side, I'm going to get a negative 1. And the square root of negative 1, also, no answer. And x squared plus 6. Right? If I look at that, set it equal to 0, I would subtract 6 to get x squared equals negative 6, and then square root that, which I can't do. So these ones here, it's not possible for the denominator to equal 0. There is no number that you could put in there that would make it equal 0. So I'm just going to finish by writing this has no solution. So it says, why do they not have vertical asymptotes? I'm going to say their denominators cannot equal zero. Right? There is no number that I could put in this equation that would give me a zero. Right? Because anytime I square a number, it's always positive, and then a positive plus four will still be a positive number that's not a zero. Okay, so you can join me in the next video to see part three of this investigation.